To another week of Art Life. In this episode, we're going to be in the studio touching on a number of topics, uh, starting with primers. I'm Jessie. I've been a full time artist for 10 years and thought it about time I start sharing my painting techniques and adventures. Subscribe to join me every week for a window into my art life. So last week we went to Michael Harding Oil Paint Factory and we had a tour of all of their mediums and materials and oils that they use. They gave us some non-absorbent acrylic primers. If you haven't seen that episode, please check it out. Um, so I would like to experiment this week with priming canvas and how using a coloured primer affects the colours of paint you use on them. Um, again, so we've got the black, the neutral grey, the titanium buff, olive green, we've got the raw sienna and burnt sienna. Um, I think we could play with them today and just have a little experiment seeing how different colours react when you have a bowl ground, which essentially means a rich colour underneath the um, paint you're using, which give you the best surface to work on. So this is Turner's Yellow. It's actually a prototype for a new Michael Harding Yellow, which they haven't released yet. I'm the first person to try it. Um, and I thought it would be good to experiment with how the colour reacts with the different primers and seeing if using a tinted primer beneath the oil makes it come alive, gives it an extra depth or contrasts it in a way which makes it pop. Um, so let's try that now. So when I'm testing primers like this, what I want to do is use the primary colours, yellow, red and blue, and I'm going to experiment with strips of the primary colours over the primers and see which colours do what, um, and then from there maybe do a little experimental painting or two and just share with you like my progress as I go along. So we've got the Turner's yellow, which will be a really fun yellow to experiment with. Um, the blues, phallocyrene blue, which is just a beautiful blue. Phallocyrene blue. Gosh, it's just such a... Do you know what? I might even, rather than bright red, I might try a transparent oxide red with this one. Because when you mix the blue and the uh, transparent oxide, you don't get what you'd expect, purple, when you mix a red and a blue. You actually get green. It's this really funky alchemy thing, which I still can't quite get my head around. Okay, so we've got a Turner's yellow. I mean, look at this. Oh, it's like liquid gold. And this is just pure pigment. I haven't mixed this with anything. Okay, so black is very pop with the black. Okay. I quite like it with the titanium buff here. There's a softness to it, which I think could diffuse quite nicely. Okay. 
I think using the primary colours will be really helpful because we'll get to see. Oh, it's lovely with that raw sienna as well. So I quite like it with different shades of warm. I think the cooler colours with the yellow don't work as well. I actually prefer the warmer colours at the top, so that's good to know. Okay, so just a bit of yellow there. I can also try with a bit of white actually. So you know when you add white to the turn of yellow, I think it becomes quite buttery. Okay, I'm not sure about the black, but again it's, you know, I'm sure I can find a use for it. It's, just, I, it's all new to me, I need to experiment. Okay, so this is transparent oxide red paint on a transparent oxide primer. Let's bring it down. Rose. It looks lovely on the sienna and the oxide. Oh wow, look at it on the um, titanium buff. It's interesting using a transparent colour. So it looks lovely on the black. It looks really like mahogany. Try it with a bit of white. Wow, now look at this with the black. That could be amazing if you did like a really rich painting with that. Rembrandt-esque. Okay, now look at the complementary here. Oh my goodness. Oh wow, it goes like a Caribbean turquoise with the raw sienna. Like a that could be an amazing like azure. Could do some like azure seaside or something. But then look at the difference when you do it onto the titanium buff. Okay, so this is a really good example of how the primers change the colour of the paint immediately. Because I hate working on white canvas. Psychedelic. Let's try with some white. Okay, so when you use an, uh, a transparent layer of oil, you really see the colours through. The moment you add white, it brings the colour right to the surface so it sits on top of the colour and you don't get any kind of nuance. If you see here the difference when you're working on a kind of creamier colour to when you're working on like the olive green or even the black. It depends what you want to do. I mean, I think I could do a, quite a interesting landscape with some of the warmer colours to really show that heat through. I think the, the blue looks slightly warmer against a warmer colour because when you look at it in the black, it just looks so much cooler and icier. So I love this Turner's Yellow and I think I'm particularly drawn to the titanium buff. I mean, I love these warm oxides, the warmth of that, it really makes like the blue pop. Um, I'm not so comfortable with the cooler colour so I might do an experiment with that just to challenge myself and see like if I can learn a bit more about working on like a grey background. So let's try that as well. Let's start with the, the titanium buff. I love that cream. I think that's so beautiful.
Okay, so working on the titanium buff, um, I found just adding some yellows and peaches as a base ground, um, almost like adding to the primer, um, has given me some ideas about how to create a painting full of light. Um, it just neutralised that really harsh white of the kind of stretched canvas. Um, and I think when it's dry, it's going to give me some really rich, kind of warm undertones. Um, so we'll keep working on this one. But for now, I literally just with the Turner's yellow, a bit of white and a bit of rose matter, created like a really peachy dawn light sky. Okay, so I found an old vintage frame and I thought using the grey would be a really good way to kind of pick up the tones of the frame. Um, just as like an experiment, um, I think, so this is the neutral grey, um, so I think using an icy blue will be quite fun with this one, I kind of want to capitalise on its kind of coolness, I think, you know, it's autumn now, those grey skies are everywhere, maybe just using it as um, a way into a rather kind of moody painting will be quite effective. So referring back to our little tester, so the titanium buff was here, Love it. So the grey, I definitely think the bluer tones will be more interesting with the grey, um, particularly with the glazes of blue. I think that will be quite punchy. Not, I don't really want too much yellow on the grey. I think um, I've got a painting at the moment which I'm doing which has gone a bit wrong. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and it is the grey. Grey can make it like detract. It's a mid-tone, so it can either balance a painting or it can really suck the kind of contrast and life out of it. So. Um, yeah, I need to work more on grey, really. Okay, so let's try like an icy king's blue. Okay, so that actually is so subtle. Okay, no, don't like that. Okay, let's try it with some white. I'm finding working with the grey primer makes the blue look almost 3D. So deeper colours, I think, have more effect. When I use a kind of very subtle grey-blue, it kind of just disappears. So I think the key with these primers is to actually be bold. So in putting a really cool icy blue over the grey, the, bright, the grey now actually looks quite warm. It looks like there's a little bit of red in there, particularly when it's offset against these really kind of cold, playful blues. I think actually there's more warmth to the grey than I actually realised, um, which is a nice discovery. So this is why we're doing this. We're just experimenting and playing and seeing how working on different colour backgrounds can bring out nuances of colour that maybe your eye can't perceive. I like Wicked. it. I really like it. <laughs> I think using the grey made me make different decisions. That's really cool. Thank you. I think we could use a bit of purple with that, like just add some contrast. It has to dry first though. This is the thing I get too excited and I overwork something and it gets really messy, um, which is what's happened with the painting I'm working on at the moment. I've overworked it and it had so much life and now it's feeling a bit deadened. So I'm gonna see if I can fix it. Working, overworking a painting is one of the 
biggest problems I have, and I think most artists have with painting, um, it's that you kind of are loving what you're doing and then you kind of lose it and you make a mistake and then you spend five hours trying to get back to where you were. This is basically the process of painting. But if you can kind of fix it, I always think that the painting has a more interesting sense of depth and reaction to problem solving and that's the beauty of painting, it's often just problem solving. <laughs> This is my problem painting. So it started off as a really beautiful sap green and soft pink and it was dreamy and I overworked it. I added all these dark mid-tones and then some random limey yellow. I think the light was bad in here and I think I need to get some better studio lights because I thought it was amazing and I came back the next morning and I was like, oh my god, what have I done? So after playing with these sort of studies today, I think I just need some fresher colours, some icier blues, just maybe a little bit of white to lift the clouds again. And I want to get rid of this blue because I think it's meant to be green and that's my, obviously I went a bit colour blind. Um, I can definitely fix it, but paintings at this stage are quite tricky because someone might look at that and be like, what are you talking about? It's amazing. My vision for this painting is something I mean, after looking at that autumn walk today, the colours in nature at the moment are so interesting. I want to make it warmer. At the moment, it feels very cold. So, some nice warm tones, lighter colours, and let's see if we can look at it. years ago when a painting was going really wrong I would basically get a bit of turpentine which breaks up the oil paint it's kind of what I used to clean my brushes sometimes and I just put a little bit of turps on the painting uh, just to kind of wash away some of the paint because you can put too much paint on a canvas and you start to get too much texture where you don't want it I think it might be quite useful just to do it because this painting can't go any sort of worse Um, we've got some new watercolour prototypes from Michael Harding. They literally look like little oil paints. Um, so next week we are going to experiment with using these oils, I mean, sorry, using these watercolours. We saw how they were made in uh, last week's episode. So next week's all about trying them and experimenting with different effects and can we get the watercolour to look like oil, as good as an oil painting. Very exciting. Um, so I'm going to keep trying to fix this painting which I think is going slightly better. I think it's going to be fun to try and fix it before next week's episode and I can keep showing you progress. Please follow me on my Instagram at JessOliverArt if you would like to see me do progress with this painting because all week I do post updates of the studio life. Um, but tune in next Monday for more um, studio time and thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, yeah and I'll see you next week. Bye!